Greetings lovely people of the internet. I'm Movie Geek and I make video essays every other Monday. In this video I will attempt to analyse how Jean Renoir uses extremely sophisticated cinematography in his 1939 movie The Rules of the Game to create the image of a moral vacuum, a feeling of dread and sharp satire not only of 1930s France but of the human condition. In The Rules of the Game, the characters appear to inhabit a system, a game even, which has taken on a sinister life of its own. Nowhere in the film is this more apparent than The Hunt. Renoir was a pioneer of the deep field technique which, if you take away the sciencey stuff, essentially allowed you to film the foreground and the background in focus at the same time. This meant that Renoir could film his characters in close-up as well as in the background of a larger system. During the hunt scene, and a lot of the rest of the film, the characters are shown sympathetically in close-up, only for the camera to show them harshly as players in the monstrous game by moving backwards. This creates a sense of a society which has long since left the control of its inhabitants. Furthermore, the images of the characters remorselessly gunning down more rabbits than they could ever eat is chillingly reminiscent of the death brought by World War II. Renoir links images of the characters submitting to the will of the hollow value system they inhabit to imply that a society which has ceased to believe in its own values is paving the way for fascism. However, these characters are by no means innocent slaves to their own society. The parallels between the death of the rabbits and the death of Andre at the end of the movie show that human life has become cheap in pursuit of abiding by the rules of the game. The final shot of the movie shows the shadows of the characters rather than the characters themselves re-entering the house, suggesting that the characters have lost their humanity. That being said, the society or game which the characters inhabit is almost a character in itself. The reels of the film seem to be in place of acts in a play, with each one dealing with a different theme and a fade out between them. For example, the sixth reel, or act, focuses entirely on the hunt. However, when the antics of Andre, the only character who refuses to play by the rules, get out of hand, this structure disintegrates and the film switches to real time. The events progress at the same rate as they would in real life, as everything spirals out of control. Eventually the game regulates itself by having Andro be killed, but not before classes have mixed and the rules have been broken. This draws attention to the artifice of the cinematography in the early reels before the rules were broken, suggesting that only through breaking the rules of the game can the characters be truthful. Interestingly, the character Octave, who drives most of the action through setting people up and manipulating the characters around him, is played by Renoir himself, who, as the director, would drive the action of the film. This blurring of art and reality highlights how life has ceased to consist of reality for the characters who have a strong disconnect from their actions and their real-life consequences. It is during a play within the film that the forces Octave has been toying with become too much for him to control. Consequently, he is physically unable to get out of both the bear and the director costume. The piano plays itself and the game plays its players. In conclusion, Renoir creates a sinister image of a society which has begun to pave the way to fascism through its own hollowness. Thanks so much for watching. Comment below your thoughts on the rules of the game and any movies you'd like to see video essays on.